Da 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 da. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Our Vision, where we try to help each other to reclaim our ability of envisioning a better common future. Today, I want to share with you the story of the Bio Parque Moncora, which at this point is a beautiful place just north of the town center to take a walk, enjoy some tranquility, get a look at this beautiful view. But at the same time, it's also one of the pioneering reforestation projects. It was started 14 years ago in 2009 the six hectares of land are actually not owned by a private person or anything like that, but by an NGO, the Asociación Aquileopara. Fun fact, Aquileopara was the first president of Colombia in 1876 and was born right here in Barrichara. Well, while the association does have several dozen members, the project was started and is currently mostly run by two women. Camila and Vicky, who came to Barrichara a few decades ago, and once they saw the opportunity, proposed to reforest this land instead of using it for very, very, very profitable real estate development. Since then, they have put an incredible amount of persistence and patience into tending this, and I would say have developed something really quite beautiful. So say hello to Camila and Vicky. My name is Camila Encinales. My name is Vicky or Maria Victoria Camacho. The land of the Bioparque belongs to the Asociación Aquileopara, Amigos de Barichara, a non-profit organization who bought some of that land and another part of the land was donations to them. 2008, the Asociación Aquileo Parra called uh, for a meeting with the community to tell the community that they had plans to make 60 houses in that land. And the opposition was very, very, very strong. So strong that the Asociación said, okay, then what would you like to do with that land? Okay. Make, a, make propositions. And we said, why don't we plant trees there? That land used to be a forest a long time ago. No? That it was cut down to plant tobacco. Tobacco needs a lot of sun, so it can be shadows. And then to plant beans, beans. and cattle. And then cows. Mm -hmm. So it was barren. It was barren. It was uh, erosion, no trees, no shadow, no soil, no rich soil. And we said, let's, let's do what we can. We have, to, we have to do it. Because if we don't start and if we don't do it, uh, there's, there's the possibility that finally they'll build some houses. And the problem with all real estate development in Barichara is always the water especially up on that hill, there might not be enough water to go around to provide reliable service for everybody. So after a few months of planning, the first tree was planted in August 2009. Now, I thought that that probably happened after a long process of trying to convince the association, but... The no, 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 it was just not like that. so long. No. <laughs> they said, okay, start planting. They didn't know what was going to happen, really. But they said, okay, start planting. No. So what was the situation? Did you have a lot of funding to no. start this? Well, how did you start? What were no. the first few we had years like? A little bit of money of a donation. Donations, private donations. Private of, donations. Oh, yeah. someone who says, I think that's a good idea. You can have uh, some money, but very little. We started without, just with that uh, little money. We start asking the people from the, the campesinos, the, the farmers. Yeah. What should we plant there? And we receive a lot of help from them, telling us what was the proper trees to plant there, and they and they helped us. Yeah, yeah. they helped us yeah. because this is dry tropical forest. So 
we had to plant the native species. No, we weren't going to plant anything else. So we started planting. We started making holes with help and, and we started planting trees and learning and learning from the beginning. My inspiration was my husband. He died some uh, few months before we started planting uh, in the view park. He did a lot of uh, planting in trees in many places in Colombia. Um, I, I've always been, let's say my family has always had coffee farms or I was in touch with nature and I liked it. But I didn't really have a plan to dedicate myself to the to a project like this one? No. No. Just... Me either. <laughs> the one who planted trees was my husband, not me. <laughs> <laughs> During those early days, the dry seasons were tough, since there's only one small natural water reservoir in the Bioparque, and at that time, no pumps. So Vicky and Camila were manually carrying around water in buckets to bring it to the young trees. However, it was working. The project got off to a good start, and the planted trees started growing. It was still, however, a very lonely affair. During the first two years, nobody really went up there. But then, that started to change. Two years after we started planting trees, when they were little, but we could show something, we started writing to the schools and we wrote to the main school here, uh, telling them that we were planting, that we, what our project was, and that we would like the, all the students to be able to go up there and start a project of education. You know, everything that had to be with tropical dry forest and everything. So, I think, in that moment, when we started working with the students, with all the children, the community started learning more about what we were doing, because the children go home and tell. That work with the students was marvelous. And then the families start knowing, okay, these children are going to the Bioparque, where is that? Okay, we want to see it, you know? And that was the way that uh, the community started knowing and uh, looking after the geopark. I think that when we had uh, the, the pandemia, the COVID. Ah, ah, see. Sí. In, no, that was very important because people didn't have anywhere to go and they could go and take a walk and sit yes. around yes. and be yes. in the air. No, not only in the streets of Barichara, but in the place so that yes. people from the town started going more in the streets. Anybody can go at any time, and if there's no, you don't have to pay anything to go in, because we, we believe firmly that this belongs to Barichara. There still were many challenges along the way. The dry seasons could be devastating, and funds were always barely existent. Vicky sometimes gave charity concerts. They sold bags with biopaque motifs and had other fundraising drives with which they now officially employ one person to conduct regular maintenance. However, individuals would also regularly give direct donations because Vicky and Camila say people trusted them. How did that happen? Trees growing is very sexy. <laughs> huh? <laughs> the education with yes. the children that that is also very important. For very us. important. It's very, very important. important. We try that the activities are fun, but we try to learn. We want them to learn about the species that are proper of the tropical dry forest and of this region, so they can learn the names. Tell them about the experience of the Rio Parque, how we started, how if you continue doing things, you finally can, can get a result. And um, what we do a lot of, of games about the trees and what is the importance of trees and the importance of water. Yes, that was the main issue. Why we have to plant trees? They didn't know. Why? No. And we want them to know the trees. The names of the all names, the their structure, uh, the leaves. They had to mm, draw a tree, for example. And we tell them that the Bioparque is theirs. It belongs to Barichara. It's important to Barichara and they have the mission to, to take care of it. Because we're not going to be there all the time. The main sentence we say to the students and to the people who come to visit is the Bioparque is of all of us. 
of all of us, and we have to take care of it. I think it cannot be stressed enough how important this is. Continued maintenance over generations. This is the obstacle that so many projects fail to overcome and then slowly get lost. So how are activities organized now? We have a, a committee for projects, for new projects, with people from the Asociación Aquileo Parra. So we take decisions with them now, and with the board. Because now the bio, Bioparque is very, it's, it's important. I mean, it's known in the region, it's known in Colombia, maybe abroad. So then the, the, the board of the Asociación are interested to know what can be done, what we are planning, and they discuss it, we discuss it all together. So what's your vision? What's your plan for the next few years? And why? For the next three years, densify the Bioparque. More trees, more trees. And also to, to have continue with the education. And if, we, and if we can get some help, because Camila and I can't do everything, then to have more students coming from different places of different ages and continue with the education. Because we need trees, because we need water. We need food also, and you can mix the two. And if we have water, we can have a better life for everyone. And why is it so important to educate the children of Barrio? Oui, because they, they have to be in charge of the of the new park in the future. <laughs> because oh, many sure. of many of the children who live here, who are born here, study here, and maybe they go later to the university, and then they don't want to come back, or they don't know what to come come back for, and and this is a different a different way to live. The lesson that, I, that I've learned is that if you want to do something, you can finally manage to do it because we didn't have any money, we didn't know about it, it wasn't something uh, uh, scientific or whatever, we know. We wanted to plant trees because we saw the problem in Barichara with the water and with the deforestation and all this. And, and this place, which Alberto, husband had visioned that could be a, a forest. We thought that was wonderful. So, so that was it. I think that's, that's the lesson is that you can, you, you have to not give up so easily. <laughs> so I had gone into this thinking that I was going to find the story of environmentalists having to work incredibly hard to overcome some entrenched interests around seeking money. But either Camila and Vicky were incredibly humble about how difficult this was, or since I probed them honestly quite a few times, this story is just simply not true. Which makes me incredibly hopeful, because that means that while obviously there are many places where interests are so entrenched that anybody trying to start a regenerative project has to fight a real uphill battle. There might just be many more places where we just have to have the courage to ask, to propose a regenerative project. Find out that most of the community will, maybe if not joining it immediately and putting all of their life energy into it, at least spread the good word and not hinder it actively in the background. So, I was definitely guilty of assuming this quite a few times, and it seems to me like we really just have to have the courage to try. I'm also incredibly impressed by the fact that after convincing the landowners to use this regeneration, there was never really any big initial investment nor a large labor force used for this. It was really just persistence over a long time span constantly coming from maintenance, constantly checking in what's needed, what's going on. So, after 14 years, well done Camila and Vicky, you've created something truly beautiful and I deeply respect your enthusiasm for making the best out of very small resources. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Our Vision and the story of the Bioparque. If you want to share the gift, of inspiration, send this to a friend of yours. Let's regenerate the earth.
We like our work. Yes, we love it. We love our work. Yes. And I, I think it loves it. you back. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's